With the endless talent and variety of skills in today's NBA, many players on great teams simply don't get enough minutes or touches, especially when there's a top 50 player playing alongside 3 or 4 teammates better than you. Being able to adapt doing all the dirty work will allow your team to contend. Some players just understand their role in the league early on, while others who tend to struggle going from team to team will have a difficult time finding an identity, leading to getting bounced around multiple teams until unclear claimed overseas they go still in their mid-20s. For many young players, if they can't produce by their third or fourth season in the fast and changing landscape of the NBA, contenders won't want you. Tanking teams rather stick with their first or second year guys and not take chances on players who want to save themselves to remain in the league. But having a combination of the right teammates, complementary skill sets to a team's franchise player, a front office that believes in you, coaches that believe in certain types of players. Some role players finding their spot in the NBA tougher than you think. But now, for the players on this list, averaging under 20 minutes a game, making every ounce of their positive impacts felt, their teams wouldn't be where they are without them all season. Starting with Dante Exum of the Dallas Mavericks, averaging exactly 20 minutes played, the 28-year-old took his talents overseas to Spain and Serbia, absolutely brushed up his game, transformed himself to a respectable 3 and D with good handles. Starting 16 of 54 games, kept the Mavs afloat with Kyrie out, it's not his 8 points a game average or shooting nearly 50% from the field. But the timely buckets, clutch daggers, being ready at all times from a Luka pass, the perfect example of an NBA player gaining back the confidence when many didn't think he'd be good enough to come back to the league. Having a multitude of injuries early, the former fifth pick of the 2014 draft, super easy to root for, being a fill in the gaps, whatever needed type player, great activity on D, the glute guy for the Mavs that was missing all of last season, as Exum to play 30 minutes a game. His efficiency would take a massive hit, but being in Dallas with two of the most talented backcourts today, the maturity and chemistry with Doncic, flawless. Being trusted to knock down big time jumpers and smart enough to know when to shoot or pass, three years ago, you'd be falling out of your chair if one was to tell you Dante Exum would be a more impactful NBA player and all 30 teams would rather have him right now over Ben Simmons. The two's attitude couldn't be more opposite. While Tim Hardaway Jr. getting 27 minutes a game, many Mavs fans can agree Exum should take some of his minutes away. Could Dante be the godfather or former failed young players to resurrect their NBA careers after going to Europe for two years? If he didn't get hurt for over a month miss, could have been one of the candidates for comeback player of the year. TJ McConnell of the Indiana Pacers, feisty, gritty, hard nosed and a tough cat, the now 32 year old just brings winning qualities to his team, averaging over 10 points 5 times in 18 minutes, 55% from the field, super high IQ, easily one of the most underrated 6 man candidates, a team like San Antonio or Phoenix could use him at point guard. Always makes the team more organized offensively, capable of being the starting one. Now a fan favorite to the point, Pacers fans wish TJ can spend the rest of his career in an Indiana uniform and cherish him like Miami does with Udonis Haslam. Being a certified pure locker room positive energy guy at times transforms the Pacers bench like it was a legit starting five. When it comes to NBA talent, McConnell might be in the bottom tier range, but if there was an all-star team for the 24 most hardest working players in the entire league, McConnell absolutely right up there. Once he retires, I guarantee you many star of today's NBA will mention TJ McConnell's name on a podcast on how annoying he is to play against, just like how LeBron recently gave TJ his props, as the younger generation might not be familiar with his presence, just like kids today don't understand the impact of Captain Kurt Heinrich. If McConnell decides to live in Indiana after his playing days, he's simply the type of guy who will easily get elected if he was to run for state mayor. TJ simply who the Cavs back in 2015 thought Matthew Delvadova was, the poster boy for undersized players who had many critics doubting them to make it to the big leagues but with hustle hard and never giving up, there's a bunch of young kids out there today who look up to TJ McConnell as their goal. Kevin Love of the Miami Heat, 
Now 35 years old, absolutely reminding everybody he's still in the league, making tremendous impact last postseason, set the tone for the Heat's finals run after trying to take a charge for, on Giannis, resulting in the Bucks superstar missing more than half the series. Love although irrelevant in the regular season since after LeBron left Cleveland, it still remains a fact every year Kevin Love made the playoffs, his team went to the finals. A high IQ player, amazing outlet passer, good post ups, box out, face the Floor and always puts his body on the line. If this was the 2017 version of K-Love, many would take the heat over this current Boston team. Still doesn't get enough credit for changing his game after Minnesota, for a role player of his experience, a stability and respected voice in the locker room, his services in South Beach will not go unnoticed. Lonnie Walker IV of the Brooklyn Nets, guess who misses him? The Lakers, of course. Averaging just below 10 a game, 39% from 3, one of the most inconsistent guys, can drop 23 one night, then play just 10 minutes the next game, being contract friendly, irrelevant with the losing Nets, but he was a huge reason for the Lakers beating Golden State last season. 25 point game 4 will never be forgotten. When Walker gets the chance to be on a playoff team, could be one of those forgotten players to swing the momentum of a playoff season series or lead to a huge comeback. Mo Wagner of the Orlando Magic, averaging over 10 and 4 in 18 minutes, also improved on the defensive end, enjoying every part of the team's success, signed last offseason for 2 years 16 mil, sets crushing screens, finishes with authority at the rim, has a little swagger to his personality. How about his teammate, Jonathan Isaac? Absolute monster on defense, a hybrid of Nick Claxton and Jaden McDaniel put in one. Without question, the minister of defense, easily the best 15 minutes a game guy in the league today, finally getting his flowers, showing the ridiculous length. The now 26 year old has played the most games since his second season, unfortunately won't be eligible to make all defensive team. Not getting to 65 games, truly an X factor for a top 3 defensive team behind just Minnesota and Boston, a terror for opponents, having one of the quickest recoveries in the game, Isaac blocks one shot, then seconds later rejects another one. With a quick second and third jump, the athleticism still remarkable despite all the past injuries. To Orlando's credit, becoming extremely patient with the former number 6 pick drafted nearly 7 years ago, 80% of NBA teams would have given up on him by now. Even more than half of Orlando fans wanted him gone after last season, but truly an amazing comeback story, once viewed as a franchise player, Isaac a vital piece to Paolo and Franz. Both the two stars providing the offense, while Isaac and Jalen Suggs, tremendous on D from having outstanding moments against LeBron, Wimby, and blocking Giannis multiple times in the same game. Isaac also no longer a liability on offense, shooting the 3 ball at almost 40%, huge improvements, arguably a top 5 defender in the entire league, opponent shooting under 50% at the rim, against him, absolutely a game changer with his versatility, if Isaac ever plays 70 games in a season, could be contending for defensive player of the year with Wemby the next 2-3 seasons, kind of how Michael Porter Jr. excelling in his role with Denver, Isaac truly making his presence felt in Orlando. Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins of OKC, the 24 year old Joe, terrific 3 point shooter, 42%, plays just under 19 minutes a game, good offense, one of the best bargains, making 2 mil, a team option following year, good team player, can stay on the floor in big moments. Wiggins on the other hand, 25 years old, also late second rounder. SGA calls him a Swiss Army knife, nice cutter and spot up shot maker, also in a rookie deal, capable of scoring 20 plus on any given night. His production alongside Joe makes many already forget about Gordon Hayward being on the Thunder. Come playoff time, interesting to see which set of role players get important minutes for OKC. Just a hair above 20 minutes a game, Christian Brown of the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Looking as strong as ever, a chance to repeat the most trusted squad down the stretch with the game's best player Jokic. Brown proven in the finals, his energetic impact contagious, mixed lots of hustle plays, fearless finishing at the rim, dunking on Gobert recently, one of the most underrated athletes, a big reason why the team comfortable letting Bruce Brown walk in free agency. Many questioned Brown's abilities, having a sophomore slump to now getting more active and hot at the right time, a true winning role player at its finest. 
Honorable mentions include Steph Curry of the losing Charlotte Hornets, his NBA days looking very limited, Andre Drummond of the Chicago Bulls with the biggest absolute shack in the full travesty meme of the season, can still occasionally have those 2020 nights but way too unpredictable, still excellent on the glass when he plays, seems to be in his twilight days, but somehow only 30 years old. Kevon Looney, not as impactful this season, and Chris Dunn of Utah brings in great D, but not a great offensive player. Kim Whitmore and Miles McBride, terrific young pieces for both the Rockets and Knicks. Which one of these players the most underrated in your opinion? Your thoughts on the comments below. With the 2024 playoffs almost underway, more amazing content to come, you don't want to miss out, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.